Hi ladies, welcome to Crown Jewel Effect TV. This is Kristen Chavis signing on. Just saying welcome here to the Ruth series. We're on part two of it. And I'm telling you, God is going to share some amazing things with you. So last week we covered chapter one in Ruth. And now we'll be covering chapter two. And in chapter two, you'll find that um, Naomi and Ruth are having a conversation. And Ruth asks Naomi, uh, let me go down to the fields and glean. And Naomi says, go, my daughter. She gives her the blessing. And we just want to sit right here and marinate on this verse because there's so much that we need to understand in this verse. First, we need to understand that we always need to ask God uh, what we should be doing or ask him, can we go? Can I do this? Because it shows respect. It's just like... Um, a child that wants cookies out of the kitchen it's not that the child can't have the cookies but it's about going to the person that's the authority over you respecting your parents and saying mom dad can I have can I have this can I have that and you know the answer could be yes and the answer could be no but it's all about going through the proper chain of command and asking God you know, can I do this? Many times we just jump up and we do so many things. We make so many um, spontaneous decisions and it may not necessarily be a God decision. And you hear many people say, go with your gut feeling. And your gut feeling in the world term is just you going with your spirit, being in tune with your spirit, being in tune with that gut feeling that you're having that says no and that gut feeling that you have that says yes, go. I need you to go here. You know, it's okay for you to go because I'm going to do something for you. And God said we have not because we ask not. Many of us don't have the blessings or the blessings are being held back because we have not asked God. It's not that he won't give it to you. He said, oh, if, if you ask for bread, I won't give you a stone. And if you ask for fish, I won't give you a serpent. I'll give you what you asked for. And we have to come to God, uh, seek the kingdom of God first and all his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto the, to us. So if your, your desire is a husband or if your desire is to be loved or your desire is to be close, Closer to God, ask first, and He shall He shall either say yes or He shall either say no. But you have to know how how uh, He's speaking to you and how how He's relating the message to you. And sometimes when we don't get the message personally, we don't we aren't in tune with our good feeling. Then He will send someone else to confirm. He'll confirm through His Word. He'll confirm through another person speaking to you. God will confirm. God will get the message through to you. But first, we must ask. Okay. So after that, Ruth she goes down to the field and she asks once again for favor. She asks not to be the main reaper, not to be the person that's getting the wages to go in the field, but she said, I just want to go behind the people that are working already. I'm going to go get the scraps. Is it possible for me to work behind these ladies and get the scraps? Now, let's sit here for a moment. Ruth came to this gentleman the one that was the keeper of the yard, the keeper of the field, with a humble heart, okay? She came to this gentleman, and she didn't say how much you're you're hiring for or how much I'm going to get paid if I go behind these ladies. She came behind him with a humble heart and said, you know what, I don't, I don't even want the big job. Just let me get the scraps. And here in this place that, that Ruth is in, Ruth has lost her husband from 10 years of marriage. She's moved to an unfamiliar place and now she's in a, a a place where she's humble you're humbled if you've lost anything if somebody's died if something's died within you if your love has died within you you're in a humble place and and many of us like Orpah, you can choose to, to stay at home and be bitter and try to live your life out outside and contrary to the will of god or you can be like Ruth and come before people and with a humble heart. Yes, you may be capable of doing the job. Yes, you may be better than these people. Yes, you may glean the fields better. Yes, you may deserve a better job or a better position or even a better spouse. But right now, you need to come before God with a humble heart. You need to take any position that's available for you. And here, 
on your journey towards marriage, on your journey toward God, healing your heart, toward God, leading you into your destiny, toward you um, receiving your Boaz, God will prepare you. And he only can prepare you if you come before him with a humble heart, with humble beginnings. For myself, I had, I, I said in the last uh, series, in the last episode, that, you know, the guy that I was talking to just really just had me in a place where I just shut down. I was like, no men, no love, none of that. I love you, God. That's it. You know, if you don't have anybody else that's better than him, that will treat me better than him, that will love me for who I am and not come to me with this foolishness, not knowing that they believe in God or not, I don't have time for it. You know, life is too short. I don't have time for this foolishness. So in this place, I have this lock and this key on my heart, in my spirit that's not letting anyone in. And I'm in a humble position because I don't know if I will ever get married. I don't know what God has planned for me or what God has in store for me. So I have to just roll with the punches and just come before God and say, okay, God, whatever I did and whoever I chose, you know, move that out of the way. My thinking, move it out of the way. And in this preparation period, God is going to transform your way of thinking. He's going to transform your heart. And it comes through worship, praise and worship. You have to, because in his presence, there's fullness of joy. In his presence, there's a, a changing power a, a surgery takes place in his presence you can't go to a therapist and get this you can't buy this dr oz can't give you this this is only something that dr jesus can give you this is only something that the holy spirit can do within you god is your creator and he knows exactly where it hurts he knows exactly how you feel in your mind mentally and he will go in and repair it trust me i was in a state where i i I didn't, I had lost everything. I didn't know uh, if God was mad with me or not. You know, I said before, I didn't know if I was getting married. I just, just didn't care. You know, I just had God and that was it. And I praised my way through it. And I let God, he, he nudged me and nudged me to go to this church, this local church here. And they have a night service every Sunday night. I was there every Sunday night. If I wasn't there every Sunday night, maybe it was because something was going on or maybe I didn't feel led to go. But I was there every Sunday night and I went there for praise and worship. I went there so I could just release everything that was going on in my life because if I didn't, I was going to break. I was going to burst because I was broke. I was hungry. He had me on this diet that I didn't understand why I needed to be on this diet. You know, um, I was. he had me reading all these scriptures. <laughs> like, I just needed to get out and release. But also praise God for what he was doing. And you know, many times we hear that praising God in advance, you know, opens up doors. And it does. It sows seeds in the spirit for you, for your spouse, for your life. Praise is so necessary and it's so effective. And many of us sit on it because... We're worried about what the next person is is um, thinking about us. And even in that process, I went. When I first started going, I'm, I'm okay with standing up, clapping my hands. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with lifting my hands. But even in that moment, God was like taking the limits off of me. Because what I was feeling inside wasn't being released. And it wasn't being uh, dealt with because I was worried about what my neighbors thought. So... I began little by little every week. I would inch out into the aisle a little bit. I'll hear the music and, you know, we'll go into a praise break. And I really was feeling that inch out. And I'm like, ooh, I really, I really want to go. But mm, they may, I don't know. I really want, I'll stay right here and I'll praise. And then finally I just inched out. And then one day I was just like, you know what? I'm just, I'm just going to just be let go and let God. And when I tell you. That when I let go, God really just moved. I was like, "Ooh, I can do this. I can do this again." And I'm, man, when I heard the the spirit of the Lord moving in the service, in the music, I can't, I can't be still. You know, I can't, I can't just sit down. I just let it go, and I just let it be. And later on, I found out that my husband was at the same church. And that he was led to go to the same church 
and he was watching me the whole time. And here, in the book of Ruth, after Ruth asks, she's humble and she's in a humble predicament. She's in a humble situation. She's gleaning in the fields after the other ladies. The owner of the field, Boaz, the next kindred, kinsman, the nearest kinsman, comes up and he asks his servant, who is this damsel, is what he says. Who is this lady? Who is this woman? You know, who is she? She caught his eye because she was out there working. She was out there being humble. She was out there preparing herself, letting God do whatever he was doing in her life. She may not have understood why she couldn't be a main worker and she had to be, uh, uh, she had to get the residual of the, of the harvest, of the barley, but she didn't complain and she was doing what she was supposed to do. And that's when she caught his eye. She was not in his face, you know, pushing her hair up and, and pushing up her cleavage and saying, oh, Boaz, what you need from me? What, how, what you need? Oh, you so cute. You so handsome. Mm, here go my number. Text me, okay? Call me. Whenever you need me, call me. She wasn't doing that. She was working. She was letting God move in her life. She was in a humble position. She was preparing. And even in the book of Esther, before Esther even met uh, King Xerxes, she was working. She was being purified for 12 months. This lady, she hadn't even met the king yet. She was just possibly a future concubine or future wife. She was in the, the preparation process. And it says they purified her with oil, with uh, oil of myrrh, and with odors. This was the purification process before you could even come into the presence of the king. Before you could even come before a man that was potentially your husband. You had to be purified for 12 months. Ladies, let's think about this. Let's think about everything that we've went through our whole lives and we expect that this man is just going to find us and we're just going to jump in on the bandwagon with all this junk that we got. No. It says a man that findeth a, a wife findeth a good thing. We have to be transformed, purified, and prepared to be that good thing. And that's not an easy process. And that's not the process that everybody wants to go through. But if you let God do it, then he'll let you meet the Boaz that he's given to you. He'll let you walk into that thing. It said it so happened that she walked up on the field that Boaz owned. This was not happenstance. This was a God design. This was a God move. This was preordained. You know, I I um went to this musical, this music appreciation at this church I had never been to. But this pastor that I was kind of cool with at the time, she told me, she said, come on down. We're having something. Just come. I had never been to this church. This church is in Bossier City, which is across the river from where I'm from. I don't really, I don't have no gas in my car. Um, I'm hungry. Um, I don't know where this church is. It's in a neighborhood. It used to be a house. It's across from a school. They don't even have a parking lot. You know, you got to park in the grass to get to this church. And in this church is where I first saw James. In an old CME church, Methodist church, on a corner <laughs> in Bossier City is where I first saw him. Where we first uh, crossed paths. And we know the same people come to find. We know the same people, but God had preordained this church, this field for us to cross paths in. Ladies, you have to understand that, you know, you have to be in tune with your spirit. Be in tune with what your gut is telling you because you just don't happen. You just don't appear in places without it being a purpose behind it. If you're just going to places just to go, then you're wasting your time. But if you're spending time with God and you're allowing him to lead you and show you who you are, to purify you, to prepare you, then you're not going to miss the mark. I truly believe that many of us, um, because no one has ever uh share this knowledge or share that share the book of Ruth in this way that many of us have missed the mark but thanks be to God that you thanks be to God that once you learn better and you do better you will receive greater once you allow yourself to be 
put in a, a position where God can humble you, where God can teach you, where God can purify you and prepare you. He has to purify your mind, your body, your thoughts, the way you talk to people, the way you talk to your husband, the way you think about things. You know, to be soft and graceful but strong at the same time, to be uplifting when he needs to be uplifted, to be that, that voice of courage, encouragement, and kindness when he needs it. We have to be that you know they say behind every great man is a phenomenal woman a phenomenal woman doesn't happen overnight but it's a process that has to take place and many of us want the the glory of having that God sent man that great man of God but we haven't even went through the process to be the great woman of God that he desires that God desires it says even in the Bible that you know, the woman can, can turn the heart of the man, but the words of us can save him. So if our words aren't in check, if we're not in check, if we have not went through the process before we got the promise, imagine how you could affect this man's heart, how you could affect his life, how you can affect the way he looks at himself, how he um, approaches his job, how he approaches his career, dreams. We make the difference and God works on us first because just like Adam, God knew that Adam needed something special. And he said, I'm going to send you a help me. He made us from man. We come out of man and we complete him. We, we, are, we are so close like him. We are, are his real. We are closely knitted. We come from different mothers, but we're so much alike and we need each other because everything that you've been through, he's been through, and you're going to understand them when y'all come together. And it's, it's going to bring peace and it's going to bring love and it's going to bring intimacy. But we have to be worked on first. We have to to let God move through us first. So if you're in a position where you're, you've never been married, you're single, you're unmarried, this is where it starts. This is where you say, okay, God, what do I need to do? Okay, God, I see what you're doing. I'm hurt. I'm broken. Fix me. Do what you want to do. I want to receive the blessings. If you're, you're a if you're unmarried or if you were married and you're, you're divorced, you say, okay, God, the first one didn't work out and I did everything I could and I really don't want to believe that I'm too old for this or that um, love isn't real because I've lost faith in love. You say, okay, God, do it. Fix me. Show me. Show me me. Show me. Prepare me for what's going on. And you may be the woman of God that has had the husband or you in the marriage and it's spiritually dead and you say i don't know what to do you're in a humble place right now because if you ever if you ever find yourself in a marriage that's not what it seems like on the outside or not what you wanted it to be you're already in a humble place so here you come before god and worship and you say okay god show me how to love him right show me how to love him even through his mistakes show me how to love like you love Pur purify me, purge me, change my thoughts, change my 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 uh my the design within me that wants to be angry, the design within me that wants to be bitter, that wants to throw things against the wall, that just wants to give up. Show me how to love, how to work through this process. And even in this, God is going to prepare you. God is going to to nourish you. God is going to change some things. He's going to change your way of thinking. He's going to give you an unmerited amount of strength that's going to help you bear this weight that is upon your shoulders. And whether it's designed for you to stay in this marriage or not, if this marriage was God-ordained or not, God is going to give you the strength and prepare you even in this moment. And it's not for you to pray and say, God, okay, release me, hurry up, do this. It's not for you to do that. It's about you being purified and ready for the next transition in this process ladies this has been another crown jewel effect episode crown jewel effect tv and i pray that something was said here that was good for you to marinate on good for you to chew on 
and trust me we have more trust me god has more in store for you and i'm here for you in your process i'm here to coach you through i'm here to be that voice of reasoning i'm here to let you know that you're on the right track or you need to get back on the right track i am here for you i understand the process i understand the letdowns and i understand the come up ladies like us on facebook shout us out on twitter at kristen chavis um miss 21 days of encouragement on instagram also, be in tune for my husband's ministry. Uh, I am encouraged radio. It is a blessing. He always posts it on YouTube, but it's also on the accelerated radio network.net. It's an internet radio. It's something like Pandora. Check it out. He always has a great word for us. I